21773, Commonwealth versus Josiah Kaling. Good afternoon. May it please the Hang on a minute. Good For afternoon. The green May light. it please the court. <laughs> Elizabeth Sweeney on behalf of the Commonwealth. I respectfully request that this honorable court reverse the lower court's decision where the motion judge erred when he held that the Commonwealth needed to <coughs> disprove medical marijuana licensure in a search warrant affidavit, yet held that there was probable cause that the defendant was cultivating marijuana. Licensure is an affirmative defense. And, and an affirmative defense merely excuses or justifies the defendant's criminal act and cultivation. But that's at trial. What about in a search and seizure context? In a search and seizure context, there On the gun, it's not enough to just say that, oh, I think somebody has a gun, even though you know there are, it's legal to have guns, and it's not legal to have guns. It all depends <coughs> on a license. You just can't come in and, and say they have a gun, I can go in and get it. Exactly. There needs to be evidence of illegality. Illegality. And what is the illegality here? In cultivation, even after the medical marijuana law is, is illegal, the medical marijuana statute... Have a gun without a license is presumably illegal. Correct. There needs to be evidence of illegality. And the medical marijuana statute, the medical marijuana law, did not legalize cultivation. All it did was create an exception for certain individuals who go see a physician get a physician's letter to grow marijuana for a limited period of time until the state has dispensaries open. And at this point in time, there are no dispensaries, so individuals can cultivate legally if they have a prescription from their physician. And also, to require the Commonwealth to disprove licensure in the search warrant affidavit would have been impossible <coughs> because there was no database for the Commonwealth to check to see if the individual had a medical marijuana but license. But let me ask you this. Like... <coughs> Couture is the, is the gun one, right? I'm I think. sorry. Commonwealth versus Couture is the gun license search warrant. So as the court um, noted in that case, there wasn't evidence that they asked the driver, uh, do you have a license for the gun? And I'm just wondering whether, I, I understand there's no database, et cetera, but would it be, what about asking um, Mr. Canning, do you have a, a doctor's certificate or a medical certificate the before police, you do that, before you go in? When they did execute the search warrant, the police did have a conversation with Mr. Canning, and at that point in time, he indicated that he was growing marijuana for profit. But before they did the search? No, that was after. It was after. The police were already in the house when yeah. the search was going on. However, there is no way for the police department to determine if this individual had a medical marijuana license. Well, why, didn't they, why couldn't they ask him? When they were inside the Answered. house? Didn't they have a knock and announce? They did have a knock and announce. Correct. So why couldn't they, upon entering, ask him? They had a conversation when they entered and the did house. They, no, that was, and did they ask him if he had a license? The record in the police, um, police report is silent whether or not the immediate question was it, they didn't ask him, do you have a license? They were told him why they were there. They were there to execute a search warrant, and they continued with a conversation when, as to why they were there. But there was no discussion about show us your medical marijuana card, similar to show us your FID card. Well, actually, I, my, my, I wouldn't, it wouldn't have solved this problem because I forgot it's a search warrant, and there's no search warrant in Couture. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have known that beforehand because they didn't talk to him before they got the search warrant. Right, and yeah. Couture is different from this case because it's Commonwealth's position that in Couture, again, there's no illegality. There was no, at the point where the person had the gun in their back pocket, there was no demonstration that they're doing anything illegal. And in this case, the medical marijuana law did not legalize home cultivation. Yes, it did. It's, it's like a license to cultivate if you have a medical reason. For people who have a medical reason, it's not that they're <coughs> exempt moment. It, it's like a, li it's a license, essentially. Well, That's what the registration allows you to do, to cultivate legally an amount that you need for use, presumptively 60 days, 10 ounces, or whatever. The, but there's nothing, I guess, with respect to cultivation, but at least once it's dried or in your <coughs> pocket. And, well, Ten ounces. It, this case is similar to uh, a hypodermic needle context. Um, in Commonwealth v. Landry, um, that case did not hold when the person showed them their, their card saying that I can possess a hypodermic needle, that the police um, couldn't arrest absent that. There's no requirement that the uh, Commonwealth disprove an affirmative defense or a hypodermic needle card or FID card in the... No requirement here either. If there's 
uh, other evidence of illegality. I mean, some, uh, some indication <clears throat> that there's, as in the case of a gun, somebody is apparently underage or other indications that it might be in a legal possession of an otherwise um, authorized use if you have a license. So if you have that, you can get a search warrant. But a, a strict reading. Like distribution, for example. Well, but distribution and cultivation, I'm sorry, Justice Cordy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Distribution and cultivation are two, two separate um, issues. You can have a medical marijuana card and still be violating. I meant still cultivating be... for distribution rather than for personal medical use. Correct. You can still have a, uh, you could have a medical marijuana card and still be violating the law. You could be, have um, more than the amount of plants required with the, the would, license or not in a locked room. What would that number be? Um, it's 60 days or 10, um, 10 ounces. Nothing in the regulations nothing in the law that suggests that how many. much you need to grow. Right. And the regs also require that it actually be in an enclosed space, that it not be visible. So all of those things are legal. <laughs> You can't have it visible to the public if you're legally growing. So none of those are indicators of illegal cultivation. Well, I take it there was also information from a confidential informant, correct? There was. And what was that information? In um, January of 2013, <coughs> uh, CI informed uh, Brewster PD that the defendant was selling marijuana, that he was um, distributing marijuana. Okay, so you have that, and then you have the observations of the officers, a fairly significant operation. What were the electric bills there? Very significant operation. His electricity bill was four to five times the <coughs> area houses in Brewster. Um, there was information from a DEA agent in Foxborough that saw him purchasing what he described in his professional um, capacity as a large amount of grow materials from the hydrogen. Does it take, actually, to successfully grow an amount necessary to have a supply if you're medically uh, required to have access to mar mar medical marijuana? The record is silent as to that amount. Right. But again, if we look at the search warrant affidavit, and um, didn't the, the judge didn't did find that there was probable cause in this case that he was cultivating. Right, but, so, but, not, right. but not probable cause that it was beyond the <coughs> amount for personal use. But if we were the, the judge to made reference to he's not prepared to rely upon his 1960s <laughs> Yes, uh, his 1960s and experience. his 25 years of hearing drug cases in Orleans District Court. <clears throat> Um, but even taking, taking that information and um, looking at Massachusetts medical marijuana statute and comparing it to other state statutes, for example, Vermont, the State v. Senate case that I cited from 2013, in that case, they rely on this court's jurisprudence, on Cruz, on Landry, and they discuss that um, in the Senate case <coughs> fa has facts that are very similar to ours, that the state did not need to disprove licensure at the outset of a search warrant. Well, I guess my concern is guns are similar in that if somebody goes to a gun, if somebody purchases a gun and that's all you know is that they purchased a shotgun and they bring it home, <coughs> you wouldn't get a search warrant unless you had probable cause to believe that that gun was unlicensed, correct? Correct. Uh, so you do that routinely in the gun area. And Justice Cordy mentioned there arguably could be information in this affidavit, which one maybe could construe to say that the amount was illegal because it was beyond the amount for possession. So the question, I guess, is why shouldn't we require that there be PC for the Ill illegality of the marijuana cultivation, just as we require PC for the <coughs> illegality of the possession of a gun? Because if you were to compare the, um, the gun statute to the cultivation statute or, statute, or even the hypodermic needle statute, in hypodermic needle and FID, um, or possession of a firearm without an FID card, licensure is an element and included in the way the statutes were drafted. And cultivation, as of now, has no element, has no indication that anybody can cultivate absent a medical marijuana license. The, the difference, I think, is it, possession of a gun without a license or an FID card is the crime, right. whereas this says it is illegal to cultivate. Yes, it is illegal to cultivate marijuana, period. And in 2012, when the voters passed the medical marijuana law, if you read the uh, referendum and if you read the DPH regulations, they were informed that this would in no way, shape, or form legalize cultivation, distribution, or any marijuana crimes. And what essentially the court, the lower court did, was to require the Commonwealth to disprove licensure, and it would have been virtually <coughs> impossible. Well, I, well, it's not, I mean, 
we would have had to go to. Well, I mean, we, we, right now there are conditional search warrants. We saw one a few months ago in which the police say uh, to the judge, we ask that this be conditioned on, say, an undercover by occurring and that that's the trigger for it and the judge can approve it, it assuming that that condition happens. You could get a conditional search warrant here that said if we speak to him and he says he has no license, that would be the trigger that would give us probable cause to search. So you could do it. We, we could do it. And if you review the search warrant in this case, it was, it was a lengthy investigation. It was five months. started in January. There's the DEA agents involved, various um, Cape Cod Task Force, Brewster PD. There was um, more, there was indicia of distribution. It wasn't just a simple. Um, Where was that? I'm sorry. I was just looking at it in the search warrant affidavit. Where is the? Well, I couldn't find what you said, that there was, dis that he said he was a distributor. Am I missing it? The first page of the search warrant affidavit, okay. um, after they get into the officer's uh, qualifications, okay. it, um, it states that I believe it was in January. Okay. I thought you just said he, he, was gr he was growing. I didn't know that it said yeah, he was Yeah, I thought it was growing. I was looking for the, it was the first numbered paragraph? Because he just says uh, he has a grow operation. He believed that um, Jeffrey Franklin and Josiah Canning, the second male, lived at the house. It's the first paragraph, paragraph one. Right. But again, um, right. That would it, it, that in itself would violate the medical marijuana statute because that they, that they lived at the house. I'm sorry. Only one individual. If you have a medical marijuana card, only one individual can can grow the marijuana. It doesn't um, legalize a multiple individual cultivation process. And um, in this case, um, the, it's a commonwealth's position. <clears throat> that cultivation is a legal period. Well, That's but I'm, I'm looking at the, at the um, initiative, and it says any person meeting the requirements under this law shall not be penalized under Massachusetts law in any manner um, for such actions. And a qualifying patient or a personal caregiver shall not be subject to arrest or prosecution or civil penalty for the medical use of marijuana provided. And then there are these list of provision, provisions, including that you now have more and so forth. And the, the section that says nothing's going to su supersede the rest of Massachusetts law says nothing in this law supersedes Massachusetts law prohibiting the possession, cultivation, and so forth of marijuana for non-medical purposes. Correct. So I do think that there's a reading of this that suggests that if you're using it for medical purposes, the cultivation is legal. If you're using it for medical purposes. That's right. However, that creates... So not all cultivation is illegal. Cultivation for medical purposes is legal, I think you could read the statute as saying. And I think you could read the statute as saying, in coupled with the 2012 referendum, that the voters were explained that cultivation is a legal period. This is a very limited, limited cultivation exception. Cultivation for non-medical purposes is illegal. That, that is correct. However, the statute of cultivation, the, um, the crime of cultivation, doesn't include that as one of the elements um, that the Commonwealth will need to prove or to establish the probability of in a search warrant. Is this a problem that's <clears throat> likely to arise again? I mean, you do have the registry, which presumably the police officers can tap into, which they couldn't do in this situation. Uh, is this just um, a separate problem, one that we, we might not have to deal with in the future because they will have access to this registry? And the registry and the registration also includes uh, a permission to check, I right. mean that's part of it. So are we in this interim period, as Justice Hines suggests? We are definitely in this this strange interim period. The um, DPH regulations are slightly behind what they wanted to have happen. In October 4th of 2013, the online um, database is now available for all officers to, to search if they have CGIS access. And as of February 1st of 2015, DPH is finally going to start issuing cards versus the actual piece of paper that a physician can give you, and patients are going to have to start registering with DPH. So in 2013, the police were faced with 
a very di difficult situation where they would have had to go to every physician in the state to determine if the defendant did access or did have a prescription written from that doctor and somehow disprove it in, right. in their search warrant affidavit. Could and I would direct this court's... Could sorry. the search warrant application have uh, something by a, a, a police officer with some expertise saying that, you know, um, this just tying it all together so that um, the, the electricity and so on and so forth, all these indicia of growing in an amount far in excess of what would be uh, a 60-day uh, supply. And I realize that the you know, council has suggested that um, there's nothing in the um, uh, statute as it exists that says that uh, growing too much is uh, a problem. Um, but I'm not sure that that's, that's so. I mean, couldn't, sh couldn't you have written, couldn't the affidavit be done in a way where um, you could see that uh, you know, in expertise, I don't know, having 80 marijuana plants would ordinarily be enough for a two-month supply, or clearly, you know, have, have some number of plants in excess of which, you know, it would be an illegal amount, an illegal supply, and, um, and that all of the indicia t comes together showing that they would have more than 100 plants or whatever that number is. I mean, couldn't you put it together so that you could, in fact, come out with, there's probable cause to believe that this is an illegal amount of marijuana that's being cultivated? Um, if I may answer the question, um, they, they could have done that. I believe that that was necessarily done with this case with the um, statement from the DEA agent from Foxborough claiming that um, there was a large amount of grow materials being purchased um, when he called down to, uh, to the police warrants on the Cape. And um, in response to your question, I direct this court to review the appeals court case of Commonwealth v. Tavorkian. And in that case, they stated that in a uh, search warrant context, we're dealing with probabilities. And that case dealt with needles and steroids in a car and determining whether or not that individual had um, a prescription or uh, an exception from, the, uh, from that being illegal in the outset of a search warrant affidavit. D does the doctor have to set the, the quantity of marijuana other than 60-day supply, or, or is it up to the user to determine how much the user is going to use in 60 days? The, the statute says that a person can have 10 ounces or 60-day supply. If, and the <coughs> statute also the says that says. they can give more right. if they if they believe that it's necessary. Uh, so a 60-day supply could be 10 pounds. A 60-day supply is 10 ounces, but the doctor could say 10 pounds. 10 ounces is equivalent to 1,000 joints. They could say that they needed more than that for their medical condition um, if they so chose. All right, thank and you. if there are no further questions, I rest on my brief. Thank you. Good afternoon, Justices. My name is Richard Comenzo. Uh, I was going to say a couple of words, but they are all of the questions that you've asked. I will just open the floor to any questions that you may have. So why didn't your client say, hey, I've got a, I got a, I got a card right here, or I got a letter right here. I'm, this is legal. Well, the question is prior to the search warrant. I, I'm just talking about when the, when the police arrived. Obviously, he didn't have one, right? Obviously what? He didn't have a letter. I can I explain that. This, uh, if you want me to explain the facts of the situation, my client was in the bathroom at the time the police ran into the home. They barged into the home and said, police, 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 on the ground. My client has, in the morning, was not oriented. He did not uh, immediately have the kind of wherewithal to state, oh, I have a card here. Well, okay. he probably never had the wherewithal to state that. Well, he did. He went down to the station afterwards, and they asked him. And? And he said, at that time, he did not have a medical marijuana card. OK, so he never had the wherewithal, actually, to say that he had one. He, uh, well, at that time, he didn't, tell, he didn't say he did or he didn't. But, I, mean, I think he's just saying he couldn't have said that he did because he didn't, I think. Is well, what, that's, yeah. that's one way of looking at it, yes. But my question is, is prior. <clears throat> to the search warrant. It's the affidavit that I'm concerned in. And the determination of probable cause has to be based on the, war on the uh, affidavit. And as stated in this, uh, by this court in Overmeyer, the foundation of probable cause must be specific data, the reliability of which could be judged by a magistrate. There was no probable cause of criminal activity stated in the affidavit. Well, the problem, in the affidavit, there are two people running an indoor marijuana grow operation. They've been doing it for several months, right? Two people running an indoor grow operation. That's what the affidavit says. Correct. 
okay, with lots of equipment. Correct. Right. Why isn't that adequate for probable cause to believe that a crime is being committed? The or reason is evidence of a crime in the, in the house. <clears throat> the, the activity itself is not illegal. Cultivating marijuana is in the home is not illegal. It isn't? It is not illegal. Pursuant to the general law chapter 94C, appendix section 1-11. But it's quite illegal unless you have a very specific authorization to do it. When a particular activity is both legal and illegal, the court does not presume that it is illegal and neither may the police nor the magistrate assume that. Well, is, are, are, are controlled, is the regulation of controlled substances different from the regulation of guns in the sense that um, the, 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 uh, the controlled substances laws are articulated in such a way that it is illegal to possess con certain controlled substances? <coughs> and, and, and what makes it legal, aren't they certain exemptions? Are you talking about General Law Chapter 94C at this yeah. point? Well, if you really want to get into the definition of controlled substance, and I didn't want to go into this area, <clears throat> but if you take a look at the definition of controlled substance under Section 94C, Section 2, Schedule 1 drugs, which marijuana is, one of the elements is that there is no medicinal value to the drug. So at the present time, although not specifically stated, it is implied that marijuana is not a Schedule I drug in Massachusetts at the present time. That caveat is that in order to remove or add a drug to Schedule I, the Department of Public Health has that requirement. One can argue that 94C Section Appendix 1-1 to 1-17 may have provided that avenue to remove marijuana from a Schedule I drug. Did the judge overlook uh, <clears throat> the effect of the blacked out windows in trying to decide whether or not the police officers had uncovered illegal conduct? I mean, they need light to grow, but they've blacked out the windows. Well, if you, so oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Doesn't that kind of say that something fishy is going on here? Not necessarily, Your Honor, because as I stated in my brief, every one of the arguments that the, that the police officer stated about probable cause, that uh, I know that, uh, that uh, drug dealers hide behind uh, uh, um, blackened walls, that uh, there are a great n number of ducks, whatever, <laughs> those are all requirements from the Department of Public Health to cultivate indoors. Um, what, what's a requirement? A requirement is that it cannot be seen in public. So Marijuana they, shall not be visible from the street or other right. public areas. Okay, what about the, the two people then? I mean, you can't, if, if there are two people engaged in this and the regulations are quite clear that it can only be one, why doesn't that relate to the illegality of the conduct? The reason that that would not relate to the egality of the conduct is because we're talking about cultivating the activity itself. We're not under General Law Chapter 276, Section well, 1. Well, I thought the, the, the permission only extended to one person. Actually, you could have more than a, a hardship license may be provided to more than one person. Well, it could be the person who's a qualified medical user because uh, under the statute, and also a qualified caregiver under Correct. the statute. You can also have more than two caregivers, but so there are, and of course the referendum itself refers to the lawful cultivation, so it's not like it says it's illegal. It's law, it con contemplates the concept of lawful, but um, I, don't, I don't know how far it goes in terms of probable cause, how many inferences in favor of legality you make when you have two people. You then have to infer that one is a lawful user because they're qualified as a medical user and the other one's a caregiver. Again, Your Honor, my argument is prior to the search, there has to be some information just in the, uh, just as Commonwealth versus Cruz, all the way down to Commonwealth versus Overmeyer, that the police may not undertake a search unless there is a crime being committed, unless they have information Probable that a crime. Probable cause for. 
So, so, or some, so some data. Is, is, is this really is this pragmatically a matter of the quality of the affidavit that that if you had had an DEA agent who had said in, in my expertise uh, when you have this type of an operation using this much electricity it's uh, it's there's probable cause to believe that it's being used for more than one person. An expert, mm -hmm. very simple statement as I believe I stated in the brief is. I'm an expert in medical marijuana. I have provided medical marijuana search warrants for many, many years based upon the information that I see and based upon the information I observe. It is my opinion, and the judge, the lower court judge said the same thing. It is my opinion that more than 10 ounces of medical marijuana, or more than 10 ounces of marijuana is being cultivated. Or my opinion what, that he's not licensed? They could, uh, you, can't, without, you can't grow anything if you're not licensed. Well, as, and I will go back to the anticipatory search warrant that would be able, to, that would take care of the matter whether you're licensed or unlicensed. Are, are doctors who issue these um, prescriptions, uh, are they required to uh, notify somebody that they have issued such a prescription? During, from January 1st, 2013 until actually November of this year, the doctors do not have to notify anyone that they have provided certifi certification for 14 or 15? January 1st, 2013, until November when the DPH uh, database was initiated. So it's 14, uh, 14. 2014, right. So presently, what, ha what occurs, and I will, if, if I may indulge, uh, a patient comes in to see a doctor. The doctor then looks his uh, information up on the prescription monitoring system to determine what kinds of uh, drugs he may have, whether he is forum shopping, whether he's doing just as we do with oxycodone. And then he goes into this certifying. Not we, not me. Uh, no, no. <laughs> the, I meant the Commonwealth. Um, and then he goes into a certifying, what is called a prescri uh, the medical marijuana system. He puts in the person's first name, last name, date of birth, social security number, and provides uh, exactly what the condition is, and checks off an attestation that states that I have looked at the PMP, and I determined that marijuana, he, he qualifies as a marijuana uh, candidate. That's what's occurring presently. So, so I, I think this was Justice Hines' question. This problem is going to go away. It may or may not go away, Your Honor, because what happens if another uh, police department doesn't even put a minimum of, I looked at the... No, but I mean, in other words, the, the, the problem that confronted these officers, that is, there's no database, there is a database now, so <clears throat> part of their due diligence for purposes of a search warrant would be to check that database, correct? The, the, there's a question. If you looked at the amicus brief of uh, that was issued by the uh, police chiefs uh, for police chief, exactly, and that they're arguing, or uh, there is a question as to how much privacy um, a patient may have, and the DPH is saying we're not going to give out a lot of information. But so we're not going to actually let the police know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's great. That's a real solution to your pro to the problem. Well, here. there's a question of HIPAA. Also, one of the questions of HIPAA, in one of the questions when the certificates were being issued, was that the requirement of placing the condition on the, on, the, uh, uh, on the certificate itself by the doctor. I've had several cases in which police have stopped clients for, and they had a certificate, a doctor's certificate, and the doctor just said, this is invalid, or the, excuse me, the police said this is invalid. And I've had arguments and I've gotten things dismissed also because they had uh, an ounce of medical marijuana, or an ounce of marijuana, they had a certificate. So I don't think it's going to go away. Until May, March of this year, March of last year, the DPH had to come out with uh, a pamphlet, um, Guidelines for Law Enforcement. They put that on their website. There is a Guidelines for Law Enforcement that did not come out until May 2014, and it specifically states that a person may possess up to 10 ounces, can have a, um, a uh, has to have a medical marijuana card from a doctor and may cultivate at home. Now, the, the may cultivate at home, and that's going to change when there are dispensaries because there'll only be a limited class of people 
who either don't have accessibility to the dispensaries or are too poor to be able to pay uh, for the marijuana that could be gotten. So that'll be a smaller population at least than now. There's a question as to the grandfathering, and, and uh, yes, you're absolutely right, Your Honor. There, what is happening is that there's a, two reasons why a person may cultivate at home. One reason is because he can't afford or she can't afford the prices of the dispensaries, and the second one is that he, uh, that 125% uh, of the, uh, they're too poor, or there are no dispensaries located near them. <coughs> I, I can also hope, but um, I've also had situations in which the police have, uh, have issued a warrantless search of a person's home because they saw a, uh, a greenhouse and the client had his medical marijuana certificate in the front, and they still went in. Like a building permit. Like, like a building permit, exactly. Like a building permit, and the police still <clears throat> went in. So I'm really not, uh, me being a defense attorney, I'm not 100% confident that the police, that this is just a, 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 an aberration. Uh, so, you know, I would, I would strongly suggest that the court determine in this particular case based upon 40 years of jurisprudence, that criminal activity must be, de probable cause of criminal activity must be determined prior to entry into, uh, prior to the search. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you very much.